All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Ken Russo. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about TypeScript, uh, what it is, why I like it, and um, some of the things that are good, at least that I believe, for the community of JavaScript and developers in general. Um, so the first question, obviously, is what is TypeScript? Um, it's a superset of the JavaScript language. Um, what I mean by that is it is essentially going to be transpiled down to JavaScript code. One of the biggest problems that JavaScript has uh, when old, some old school programmers who maybe have programmed in Java or C++ have moved over to JavaScript is the fact that there's no static typing. Uh, JavaScript is dynamically typed out, so we have things like var, let, const. You don't really get an indication of what that variable is, what it's supposed to do, where it's supposed to go. So one of the things that TypeScript does is it forces in an implementation of static typing. So if you had, let's say, um, a function that takes in a number, you can specify that this function should be taking in a number. Or if you just have a simple variable declaration, you could say var x should be a string, and it equals Ken. So why use TypeScript? Why would you want more strict declarations? It makes programming a little bit harder, but it's definitely going to allow you to get a better grasp of the program that you're writing. And especially if you're working other, with other people's code, you'll get a very good outline of what it's intended to do, where the data is going, and how it's getting there. So it works at least. I like to kind of compare it to how Babel transpiles ES6 code down to ES5. You type it in the way you intend it to be, and JavaScript or your transpiler is going to give it to whatever is needed in the way that it reads it correctly. So um, why more restrictions? And this is when I'm going to show you some examples. So on the left here, this is a little uh, like a playground that I'm sure we've all seen plenty of times. On the left, or my left and your right, you have um, the TypeScript code here. So I have let first name. And then I declare it as a string, and it equals Ken. You can have it just say that it's a string first, or you could define it right there and then. So I have my first name, which is Ken, obviously. Last name is Russo. Then I have a function, full name, which takes in the first parameter as a string. It'll only accept strings. The last parameter as another string, and it's only going to accept strings there. Void is just that it, it's not going to have a return value. And then if I call it down here, it's obviously going to alert my name, obviously. So now we come back to it. Another really good aspect of TypeScript is that it's going to autocomplete very efficiently. So in JavaScript, if you're trying to autocomplete, a lot of the time your, your editor or your IDE is going to give you such a huge list of different things that you could do. And 99% of them really don't matter all that much. It tries to populate the ones that you use most frequently or access variables that you use more commonly. But it's not, it doesn't really know. It's just taking a good guess. So in here, I have example object, which I defined previously. And I have, I access the property on it called only this will populate. If I were to delete this and try to do some auto-completion here, I could start finishing that dot. Only this populates. It knows I'm trying to access a property on this object here, and it's only going to populate this one because it knows that that's the only property on this object. A lot of the times, you'll also see the, the strict typing here. So if I'm trying to do a string that's my last name, and I give it a number, immediately it's going to tell me, wait, you define this as a string, but 5 is clearly not a string. If I want a string of 5, 5. It's OK with that. So this allows us to get around a lot of the errors, stupid errors, like this one, which I'm pretty sure everyone's done. It'll tell you immediately, this is not OK. You can't do it. You're trying to give it something else and uh, work it over until it's not read. When it's not read, it'll actually compile correct or transpile directly back down to your JavaScript code. This is good for a lot of large-scale companies. They have bigger applications, a lot more functionality than just simple JavaScript code, 
And it's also in some of the libraries that we use today. Angular supports uh, TypeScript very closely. Uh, React now supports it as well. And um, Vue, I think, they worked with pretty recently. Some of the advantages is it's optional. Your static type checking isn't all that necessary. You can tell it. If you happen to know that that input can be anything that you want it to be, you can say any. And it's going to say, OK, fine. It's not the strongest way to deal with type checking, but it allows people to kind of ease their way into this way of programming that, in a lot of cases and a lot of other languages, leads to huge performance uh, boosts. There's an optional null and no identified on data types. It just simply takes off the values of null and, um, and undefined off of data types and puts it on its own data type. There's access modifiers like private or public, which will protect your data in a certain scope. Makes it pretty useful for um, figuring out where you want your data accessible and instance and class method type things. And stronger grasp of the data flow is just essentially like the autocompletion and how it knows you can't pull this here or this property is not valid on this object that you're trying to call it from. Um, some of the industry advantages, which are the things that I like the most, it supports ECMAScript standards well before they're able to be implemented. It can take the way that ECMAScript wants to do it and implement it in its code. If they decide to change it, they could just change it. It's not too hard. They update it every two months along with Visual Studio Code. Like I said, they have syntax that mirrors the backend languages uh, like Java, C++, all the stat static and otherwise strongly typed languages. Um, and the thing that I probably like about it the most is um, I see a lot of people starting programming with JavaScript. And this transition, if you were to go from JavaScript to Java, is going to be pretty abrupt. Everything is typed out expressly, deliberately. Voids, publics, you're going you're gonna to just lose yourself in the um, excess, to, so to say, of the other languages. And this is a good way to transition in, because all of it's optional. Um, it's pretty popular. It's, it's not popular in the overall spectrum of things. So this is just the popularity based on um, GitHub repositories. JavaScript is 1.6 million compared to the next one, which is Java, uh, about half. Um, you'll see the number that I'm really interested in right here, TypeScript. That's plus 250% of um, repositories that are now using TypeScript. I would say probably in no short order due to the fact that Angular pretty much backed it very largely. And um, there are other companies which started to use it. I know Slack uh, recently changed all of their code from JavaScript to TypeScript from their desktop application because they were finding that they had some bugs that they just couldn't find out what it was. And by refactoring over to TypeScript, it forces them to have some standardization, forces them to have a team where um, you're not going to have a lot of those small mistakes. And you can also bring in some of the back-end developers who are used to this type of syntax and have them be comfortable with it. Um, let me see what else I have here. Obviously, 250% is a pretty big increase over a year. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Really, my suggestion is just give it a try. It's fun. It's pretty easy. If you think it's extra work to type extra things, it's just as simple as tabbing it. No matter whether you're a JavaScript developer, developer, a Java developer, simple and easy to use. That's pretty much it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>